Hi, Tom here and welcome to this week's Circle Line Art School video, how to draw using one point perspective. In this video, I'll show you one way to draw a road, a railway track and some houses, all in one point perspective. The first step is to draw a horizontal line for the horizon in the middle of your page. In one point perspective, the two sides of a straight road will look like they meet somewhere on this horizon line. The point where they meet is called the vanishing point, so we can draw a cross for the vanishing point here on the left. From this vanishing point, we need to draw two straight lines to the bottom of the page. This will look a bit like a triangle, this will be a triangle, but it represents also a road going to the horizon. In this drawing, all the lines that are parallel to this first road will go exactly towards this single vanishing point. But we can also draw another vanishing point on the right hand side of this drawing. Again, draw two lines from this vanishing point to the base of the page. Now we can make this second triangle into a railway line going into the distance, into its own vanishing point. So although this is one point perspective, we have in a way two drawings in one. So one point perspective on the left hand side and then another one point perspective on the right hand side of the paper. We can add three more lines to each of the diagonal lines on the train track. So three of these lines are for the metal, the steel line of the actual track itself. And then the outside line is a guideline for the railroad ties, the sleepers of the train track. So we need an outside line on each side of the railroad track. Next, we can draw a series of horizontal lines for the railroad ties using the two outer diagonal lines as guidelines, also making the lines closer together, these horizontal lines making them closer together as they go away towards the horizon. I'm drawing these horizontal lines in sort of pairs of lines, so the railroad ties or sleepers need to go under the lines of the steel rail tracks, the diagonal lines going to the vanishing point. So the railroad ties are the horizontal lines and then the steel rail tracks are the diagonal lines going to the vanishing point. Now for each of these horizontal pairs of lines we can draw a short vertical line sort of at the end of each of the lower pairs of lines and then we can join these little vertical lines up with a new horizontal line again going underneath the diagonal lines which go to the vanishing point and this will be for the edge for the thickness of the railroad ties themselves. Next we can shade in these sides so that each of the ties or sleepers has a dark side to its base. Now shade in the left hand side of the steel track and then on the left hand side, the cast shadow, the shadow coming off the steel track, will sort of be higher on the ties, the sleepers, and lower on the spaces in between the sleepers. Now we can erase the outer guidelines of the railroad ties, as we no longer need them. Now in the middle of this drawing, we can draw a house in one point perspective. First draw a rectangle for the side of the house and then a simple triangle for the roof. We can erase the horizontal line inside the rectangle, we no longer need that. Next we need to choose just one of our vanishing points as this is a drawing in one point perspective. So I will choose the vanishing point on the left. So this house will be parallel to the left hand road and all of the diagonal lines for the side of the house will only go to the vanishing point on the left hand side. So this house is in one point perspective, the same one point perspective as the road. Next choose how far back you want the house to go and then we can draw a vertical line at that point. We can now copy the front diagonal line of the roof to redraw this line as the back of the roof using the same angle as we have on the front. Now we could add a simple extension to this house. First of all just draw a vertical line on the left 
Next, we need to find out where this vertical line can be on the right, the sort of right-hand side. To do that, just draw the back line of the house, and then we can add a diagonal line from the vanishing point going to the right-hand corner of the house. Next, where these two lines meet at this point, we can draw a vertical line going up, and this will be the corner of the house extension on the right. Next, we can draw a triangle for the roof. And then if we read the lines across to the vanishing point, the vanishing point that we're using on the left, we just need to add a back line here, a vertical line for the back of this building. Then we can draw another separate building in exactly the same way as the first. I think I'll add a taller building in the distance here too. Next, we can erase some of the guidelines that we no longer need. Be careful not to erase guidelines that you do need, just erase the guidelines that you don't need. Now we can add some buildings on the left-hand side of this drawing. Again, we're using only the left-hand vanishing point for this one-point perspective drawing on the left-hand side of the paper. So all of these buildings, the verticals of all of these buildings will be straight lines, vertical straight lines, but the diagonals will all go to the single one point, the single vanishing point for this side of the drawing. Because all of these buildings are parallel to the road and the road uses this one single vanishing point. Once you have completed some simple buildings on the left hand side, we could draw a pavement edge from the left hand vanishing point to the middle of the drawing and then make a little short vertical line for the corner of the pavement. Now next we can repeat this and draw the thickness of the pavement going to the right vanishing point. Now I think in this drawing this will be the only shape, this pavement shape, will be the only shape that uses both the left and the right vanishing points. The rest of the drawing will either use the left vanishing point or the right vanishing point, never the both together. Next we can draw some more rectangles for more buildings on the right hand side of the drawing. Now all of these must use only the right vanishing point, the single one point vanishing point on the right, as they're all in one point perspective, but the one point are all the parallel lines which are parallel to the railway track that we drew at the beginning of the drawing. So now on the far right, we can draw some more simple buildings using our technique of one point perspective to make this two-dimensional drawing look more three-dimensional, more 3D. Next, we can add some details to our drawing. If you divide the horizontal line into even parts on the left here, on this building, we can then draw lines from these marks to the vanishing points on the left, and then in that way we create some floors for the building. A vanishing point is essential for perspective drawing. It is the point that is at the height of the eye of the viewer of the image. So in this drawing, which is just some made up imaginary buildings and roads, we're looking at it from a certain height. And that height is the height of the horizon, the first line that we drew in this drawing. Now all the tops of the doors, if they are going away from us on a diagonal, all the tops of the doors will be all along one diagonal line and that's the way that you find out how high each door is as it goes away from you. You just draw a diagonal line from the top of the front door, the nearest door to us, all the way to the vanishing point and then any other doors that you want to draw will go up to this um, diagonal line. Next we could draw a signpost in the middle of our drawing. 
the sign of the signpost could be parallel to either the left or the right vanishing point. I think I'll choose the left vanishing point and this means that the top and the bottom parts of the sign need to go diagonally straight to the vanishing point on the left. Next we could draw a dustbin or a garbage can, just an ellipse, a squash circle on its base and then a vertical sides and then another series of ellipses for the lid of the garbage can. We could draw some elliptical bands around the dustbin or garbage can too. Now we could add a thickness to the pavement edge. The pavement edge is the one thing that's in two point perspective. So it needs to be going to the left vanishing point and also to the right vanishing point. Next on the left we could draw a crossing, a zebra crossing. That's two horizontal lines and then we can divide that, we can divide these two horizontal lines into a series of segments and each of these segment lines goes towards our single vanishing point. We could add some small poles and wires in this drawing, some aerials and radio masts, things like that. We could also add some electrical wires along the railway too. Again in perspective, the tops of the wires will be a line that goes directly to the vanishing point, a diagonal line that goes to the vanishing point. Then they'll all be in one point perspective. I think I'll make this building here a little bit taller so it goes above the wires that I've just drawn. For this drawing, because of the shading on the railway track is on the left hand side, I'll keep that continuity and shade the buildings in on their left hand side too. For this drawing I'm using a 4B pencil, any soft dark pencil will do well. I think I'll shade these squares on the left and this door on this building on the left too. Along here we can add some diagonal blending, graded blending, sort of going from dark to light and then dark again just by changing the pressure of the amount of pressure that you put on the pencil. In a drawing like this, I think often you can keep finding small new areas where you can add little bits of detail. It's always a balance to not do too much detail and not too little detail. It's just a personal preference of finding things that you think will be interesting to draw, but also will help the overall drawing. So you're looking at details but also you're thinking about how those details will relate to the overall image to make it so that it's an interesting drawing to look at and when you look at parts of the drawing your eyes sort of led to other parts in the drawing so it becomes a drawing that's interesting to look at because of the connections within the drawing sort of the connections embedded within the drawing. Now all of these buildings and objects will have cast shadows, that is shadows that aren't on the object but they're thrown from the object by the light source. Now in this drawing the light source is on the right so all the cast shadows will go towards the left hand side. I'll start by drawing some faint outlines of where these cast shadows will go towards the left. And then we can fill in these shadows basically with probably best to do quite a flat tone, so a tone that's quite even, a shading that's quite even, it doesn't sort of modulate between light and dark, it stays quite flat. So anyway, we'll just block in some cast shadows. I think I'll add a few more details, just a few finishing touches to this drawing. The edge of the pavement, where we're looking both right and left at the same time. So if you look at the pavement, you're sort of, you can see it going left and see it going right. But if you look at the buildings, either they're going to the right vanishing point in one point perspective, or they're going to the left vanishing point in one point perspective. So really it's two drawings in one. 
If you find this drawing useful for your own drawings, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School, and stay up to date with all the drawing videos that I make. I make a new drawing each week. Thank you very much for watching. Keep drawing, and see you next time. Bye bye.